Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. I hope you're doing marvelously well. Today, I'd like to talk about the five key components that you will need for your home studio. Creativity will always trump equipment every single time. Some of the coolest, the coolest equipment that you can get now is vintage equipment from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s. And that, a lot of that stuff was really, really cheap at the time. Um, you know, I have a silver tone acoustic, I have a Harmony 12 string, and these were the cheap guitars that you could buy in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And now, of course, people love them because they sound different. So take that philosophy to recording. Don't worry about your budget. Just spend your time being creative. Um, never let lack of funds hold you back from making great music. Number one is your choice of computer. Now, you don't have to specifically use either an Apple or a PC computer. Um, there may be a couple of things that will influence your choice, but I think the most important thing is what you're familiar, familiar with and what you may already have. The great thing about a PC computer, of course, is that you can expand it very easily and very inexpensively. Um, I personally use and prefer, just personally, Apple computers, primarily because when I'm traveling from one studio to another, I would say 99% of the studios I work in have Apple computers. So it makes my life easier. And some of the shortcut keys, the quick keys that I know um, on an Apple computer, unfortunately don't translate to PCs. So that's where my personal preference is, but I wouldn't say that should restrict you because the most important thing is that you know what you use and you know how to create great music. If you have a laptop, or um, a tower, either will work. Laptops now, I mean, the new Apple laptops, for instance, come with solid state drives and are stupidly fast and will cover all of your audio needs. There's no real reason for you to, you know, buy a traditional desktop computer. So whatever you have already or whatever you can afford, you can make it work. Just make sure you have a lot of RAM in there to cover your soft synth needs, you know, your addictive or easy drama or whatever kind of other software you use, because that will start eating your RAM up as you get a high track count. The next most important thing, number two, would be your choice of DAW. Now, there are a couple of things that can influence that. Um, Logic and GarageBand, of course, are only available on Apple computers. Um, I do like Logic and I do use it on a daily basis because Logic, you open it up and it has a ton of soft synths, drum machines, etc. available on all these templates they provide. And frankly, the templates are really good. They're really, really good. There's a lot of songs on the radio, which you know they use just from the templates. So Logic is a great, great software. But 90% of my life is spent on Pro Tools. And the great thing about Pro Tools is it is available for both PC and Apple computers. Uh, the other reason why I love Pro Tools, of course, is I can move from one studio to another. But whatever your choice is, um, don't be affected by my choice because Cubase is a wonderful software. I used that for many years when I was up and coming. Nuendo is fantastic. I know a couple of professionals that love Nuendo. There's a lot of different ones out there. I think the most important thing is if you already have one that came with your computer or you have easy access to one, getting to know it and using it on a daily basis is probably the most important thing. There are so many great producers and engineers out there, some extremely successful and some of them are unknown and becoming successful, that use multitude of different platforms. Whatever you have, just get to know it really, really well. And that's probably the most important thing. The third thing that you'll need is a great audio interface. Now, this is an all-in-one box that will give you mic inputs and line outputs to drive speakers or headphones and also line inputs that you could use for keyboards etc this is um this is something that might come with your daw or something that you can add on you could buy pro tools software for instance as a standalone without the, without an interface and just run it for editing um, on your computer and then you can add one of many different interfaces Focusrite making an inexpensive one, Mbox, which is owned by Avid, the parent company, Pro Tools make one, um, PreSonus make a really good one. There's lots of different ones that are available. 
and most of, them are, most of them are interchangeable with the different DAWs that are available on the market. Remember that two inputs is probably all you'll need in 90% of the situations because, you know, if you're overdubbing musicians multiple times on, on tracks you, you may have built with soft synths and, uh, you know, addictive drums or easy drama or any of those kind of uh, drum softwares, you know, you're only doing one guy at a time. If you're working on your own, you know, you're recording a vocal, you're recording a guitar, you don't need multiple inputs. It's only when you're in a live recording situation or at least a, uh, a drum kit that you'll need a minimum of like four inputs. It really comes down to your budget. But bearing in mind that you're going to do so much stuff inside of the box, this would be something that is A, important, but B, you know, you could get away with just a two input system. And as you maybe get to start recording live bands later on, then start expanding your interface. But you'd be, inc you'd be incredibly amazed what you can do with a very inexpensive interface. The great thing about where we're at now is with a simple interface, a, a great sounding DAW with great soft synths and, uh, and access to great plugins, delays and reverbs, etc., compression, EQ, you can make studio quality recordings for very limited amount of money. The fourth thing that you'll need uh, for your home recording setup is a good microphone. Now, if I was to only get one microphone to start, I would get a decent condenser microphone. The thing about a condenser microphone is it has an extended frequency response at the top, which would give you great air for a vocal. It'll be great for acoustic instruments like guitar, you know, acoustic guitar. Um, you know, mandolins, um, banjos, you know, whatever, whatever you want to record. I wouldn't be held back by your budget. I mean, if you have $100-ish, you can get a multitude of mics. Behringer makes inexpensive mics. Samson makes in inexpensive mics. And that will get you started. Now, if you've got two to $300, then you can look at Lewitz, you can look at Audio Technica, and of course, you can look at the very, very well-known Rode NT1. There's a lot of great microphones from $100 to $300. Don't ever let expensive equipment and the idea of, of you believing that you need expensive equi equipment hold you back. You know, that's one thing I see a lot of people say to me is like, oh, I don't have the right equipment. Well, you know what? A lot of the time, even though I have expensive stuff, I don't actually always use it. I think the most important thing to, thing to know about your choice of a microphone is that it doesn't matter if you can only afford $100. It's more about your creativity, you know, because it's not always about doing hi-fi jazz or classical recording. You know, what we do is like rock and roll or dance music. You know, sometimes a non-traditional vocal sound would actually be the best thing for the job. The fifth thing you'll need, and you will definitely need this, is some way to monitor the music you're recording and, of course, the music you're mixing. Now, I would start with a pair of headphones. There's a lot of studio headphones available. If you go to your local music store, you know, you can get some good, you know, good headphones for recording, closed back headphones that you can use to monitor your music. You'll need those first because obviously if you're going to record a vocal or an acoustic instrument like a guitar, etc., you're going to need a way to hear that while you're recording. And of course, then you can use them for mixing. Um, then after that, I would obviously, you know, given your budget, move into the world of studio monitors. Now use studio monitors because your hi-fi speakers, of course they will work, but hi-fi speakers are not designed for the dynamic ranges that are going to come for recording. If you're recording an instrument, even, even an acoustic guitar can be very, very lightly plucked and then suddenly the guitar player will be like, crang, hit a huge chord. And if that's not compressed right, that's a massive dynamic shift and you can blow up your hi-fi speakers. Speaking of someone who has, when I was a kid, I was recording electric guitar and I took my parents' hi-fi speakers with my little four-track recorder and I blew them up um, because I was recording softly and then suddenly I hit an open chord and speakers went forward and they didn't come back. And that was the end of my parents' hi-fi speakers. So I wouldn't use hi-fi speakers. I would stay with studio quality, you know, inexpensive studio quality headphones and then buy yourself a pair of studio quality monitors. Now, powered monitors. And powered monitors start at about 150-ish. KRK make them, Elisis make them, Mackie make them, and um, many, many other companies. Oh, Behringer makes some inexpensive powered monitors. 
And anywhere from 150 up will get you going on those. Headphones, 50 to $100. And that's really where you, all you really need to know. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, I think the most important thing to know is creativity trumps budget. Whether you have expensive equipment or cheap equipment doesn't really matter as much as the what you actually do with the equipment. Knowing your DOW inside and out is much better than having, you know, incredibly expensive converters and microphones, etc. You know, this really is a wonderful world of, of that we live in now where, you know, you can make studio quality, high quality recordings for a limited budget these days. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to give you my, you know, give you the benefit of my experience that I've had. Um, I, like you, came up as a home recordist. Um, I didn't come through a traditional studio setting. I started with a cassette player and my parents' home hi-fi. I recorded a guitar part onto my cassette player. I then put it in my parents' home hi-fi, played it back through the speakers and recorded an overdub on the cassette player. That's how I made music. And then the second thing I got as I got a little older is I got a four track cassette player. And then I got an eight track cassette player. Woohoo! And then eventually I gravitated towards recording in eight track reel to reel, 16 track reel to reel, 24 track reel to reel, eight ats, Pro Tools, you name it. I've used all of them and I have used every kind of inexpensive microphone you can think of and every kind of inexpensive interface. You know, I, I didn't start off with high, with really expensive equipment. So my experience is I mix between the expensive stuff and the inexpensive stuff. And I love both. And it's all about application. And most importantly, it's about creativity. Creativity will trump budget any day. So ask me any questions you like. Please leave some comments here. Please subscribe. And I would love to give you the benefit of my experience. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you ever so much for watching.